Hello, my name is Laura. Today we are going to discuss what to expect at a genetics appointment. So you've talked to your primary care doctor about your HEDS suspicions, and now you've been referred to a geneticist for evaluation for HEDS. Now what? I'm going to describe my personal experience with getting into a genetics clinic and how my appointment went. And while my experience might not be the same as yours, depending on where you live, it should still give you a good idea of generally what to expect. First, let me warn you that it may take several months to several years between the time of your referral and the time of your actual appointment at a genetics clinic. Initially, I asked my doctor to refer me to a clinic called the Monroe Myers Institute in Omaha, Nebraska, because I used to live in Omaha and I knew my way around the city, and I had a few friends there that I could stay with. So she sent in the referral, and I got a phone call a few days later from the Monroe Myers Institute, and they let me know that they were no longer accepting new referrals for HEDS evaluations. So I did a little research myself to find a genetics clinic that was somewhat close to me that was still accepting HEDS referrals. I did this by literally Googling geneticists near me, and then calling the listed number to ask if they were accepting referrals for HEDS evaluations. I found a place called Sanford Imagenetics in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, that was accepting HEDS referrals. So I gave that information to my doctor and she sent in a referral for me. A few days later, the Sanford Imagenetics Clinic called and they let me know how things would work. They said that they would send me a large medical history packet to fill out. And once I mailed that back to them and they received it, they would then call me to schedule the appointment. They did warn me that that appointment would likely be several months later. So I got the packet about a week later and it was huge. I spent nearly an entire day filling it out, including a few hours on the phone with family members, because the packet asked a lot of very detailed questions about family medical history. I sent it back in the mail the next day, and about a week later, I got a phone call to schedule the appointment. They told me that it would be a two hour long appointment, with the first hour being with a genetic counselor and the second hour being with a geneticist. They said the next available appointment was in nine months in the future, which I was actually pleasantly surprised about because I had heard that it can take a couple years to get into a genetics clinic. In the nine months leading up to my appointment, I kept up my knowledge on HEDS by reading books and reading online articles, as well as watching YouTube content relating to HEDS. I recommend the book Disjointed by Deanna Jobin and the website ellers-danlos.com. And besides my own YouTube channel, of course, I recommend the YouTube channel Izzy Kornblau. She has some really great content about EDS, so go give her a watch. I think it's important to go into an appointment with as much knowledge as possible. That way you can ask relevant questions about your condition and to better understand what your doctor is trying to explain to you about your condition. I also prepared for my appointment by taking photos of myself, doing some of the positions on the bait and score test. That way, if I were to injure myself before my appointment, I would have photographic proof that I could do some of these. For example, if I injured my wrist and I could no longer take my thumb and touch it to my wrist anymore, I had a photograph of me doing that. I also made a list of the symptoms that I was experiencing related to HEDS. That way I would have something to reference to in case I needed it during my appointment as well as making a list of questions that I wanted to remember to ask during my appointment if it wasn't covered. The day of my appointment, I made sure to wear comfortable clothing that I could move well in, assuming they wouldn't have me change into a gown. Spoiler alert, they did. I arrived early and got checked in, which took about five minutes. I was shown to a waiting room where I waited for about 20 minutes for my appointment, but I was there early, and so I was right on time for the appointment. I get into the exam room and a nurse does the typical vitals check and takes my height and weight and lets me know that the genetic counselor will be with me shortly. It was barely a couple minutes wait and the genetic counselor enters with the student and she asks me if it's okay if there's a student present during my exam. I say absolutely yes because I was a medical student at one point and it's very important in a student's learning process to be very hands-on. The student ends up running the majority of the first hour of the appointment, which is basically spent rehashing that large family medical history packet that I had filled out nine months prior, with the genetic counselor helping here and there as needed. The student did a fantastic job. She was very professional and thorough. We discussed in detail my health from birth to present times, as well as health issues of my immediate family and my extended family. Once that was done, they stepped out of the room and had me changed into a hospital gown, removing all clothing except my underwear. And if you're shy at all, I would recommend not wearing a thong like I did. I would have chosen something much more full coverage had I known that I would have to remove the athletic pants that I came in. 
Once I was changed, the student comes back in with the geneticist. The geneticist was a very kind and professional woman. She ran the next hour of the appointment, which was spent going over the diagnostic criteria with me. I actually have a separate video going over the details of the diagnostic criteria, which I'll link down in the description. In addition to running through the diagnostic criteria, she also performed a very thorough physical exam of my body, including taking various measurements of my body, skull, and facial features, as well as inspecting me for certain physical features, such as a chest wall deformity and pronating ankles. She made sure that the student took note of anything particularly interesting, as well as had her feel how soft my skin was and how unstable the joints in my hands and wrists were. The geneticist also asked me about all of my symptoms that were relevant to AGDS, and we discussed them in detail. Once the exam was through, she said that I had met all of the criteria for getting a diagnosis of hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and that she would officially be giving me that diagnosis once I completed some genetic testing. The genetic testing would be to rule out some other conditions that have some overlap with my symptoms and physical features. She said that in addition to genetic testing, she was also ordering an echocardiogram or a heart ultrasound to check for any heart or blood vessel conditions, as well as referring me for physical therapy to treat my hypermobility. She asked if I had any questions, and I said no, because they were so thorough that they had basically answered all of my questions up to this point. So then the nurse came back in to get me all set up with the genetic testing, the echocardiogram, and the physical therapy referral. She said I could have these done in my hometown because I lived four hours away from their clinic. She explained that the genetic testing would come from a company called Invite, and it would be a kit that would be mailed out to me. I would just follow the instructions on the collection kit, mail it back, and then they would go over the results of the genetic testing in two months' time. So I return home, receive the kit in the mail, and it was a super easy process. I just had to essentially collect a saliva sample following some simple instructions and mail it back to them. In the meantime, I also got the echocardiogram done, which was quick and painless. I also started physical therapy. My physical therapist was amazing. He assessed my hypermobility and created a personalized home workout program that addressed all of my needs and concerns. The two months went by pretty fast, and I once again found myself sitting in the exam room at the Sanford Imaginetics Clinic. For this appointment, I got to be fully clothed, but I did remember to wear full coverage underwear just in case. The geneticist and the genetic counselor were both present for the appointment, and we went over the results together. My testing, both the echocardiogram and the genetic testing, came back negative. The genetic testing, however, did discover a variant of uncertain significance, or VUS, in my genes, meaning that I have a genetic mutation that is currently under investigation. They don't yet know if the variant causes disease or if it's benign. My geneticist said that she found it very interesting that the variant of uncertain significance that I had also happened to be on the same gene that has a known mutation for Marfan syndrome, which is another type of genetic connective tissue disorder. The geneticist assured me that I do not have Marfan syndrome and told me that I officially have the diagnosis of hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. She informed me that I would have another appointment with her in two years' time to go over that variant of uncertain significance, or VUS, again and to discuss any new concerns. She let me know that my overall care for HEDS would be handled by my primary care provider and that her role in my care would be to simply give advice to my primary care provider. The genetic counselor informed me that some of my immediate family members would qualify for free genetic testing at their clinic to check them for that same VUS that I have. Does anyone else think of the ROUSs or rodents of unusual size from the Princess Bride movie when they hear VUS or variant of uncertain significance? Just me? Anyway, that was the end of the appointment, and it took about 15 minutes in total. Overall, it was a very positive and validating experience. I'd love to hear your own experiences with genetics appointments. How long did you have to wait between your referral and when your actual appointment was scheduled? Did you have to wear a gown? Let me know down in the comment section. If you thought this video was helpful, please click on the like button. If you'd like to see more HEDS topics such as, is an official diagnosis worth it? How to talk to your friends and family about HEDS? and relevant product reviews for EDSers. Subscribe to this channel and click on the notification bell so you know when a new video is released. Thanks for watching.